Yes, Terry, what's making news today? What have you got? Well, uh, the, the big one, this is in the Daily Mail. They love this sort of story. Um, we want to stay with our granddad, a gran and granddad, and it's uh, about these uh, two kids who are actually being, um, well, being fostered or adopted by a homosexual couple. And uh, apparently there's a storm raging over a brother and sister's forced adoption by gay men. And uh, apparently the gran, the gran and granddad want to uh, adopt them. But uh, he's, he's uh, 59 and got angina, and she's 46 and has got diabetes. Yeah, that, that, that's the bit that I have to say, I, uh, because there's, there's a lot of spin in this story, but 46 with diabetes, does that rule you out looking after children? I mean, it's only three years older than me. Well, I, wouldn't, I, th I, think, I think the big issue is why can't the grandparents exactly. just take them over anyway? Yeah. I, th I think, you know, the fact that the, the people who want to adopt and being homosexual is neither in nor there. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, know, why can't living relatives, blood relatives, the, the social security services, sorry, should make it easy for the grandparents? To but they've taken the this view that they're, they're too old, stroke, too infirm to look after them. And uh, I mean, we've had people too fat to adopt before. Ridiculous. It does seem weird that you've got blood relatives keen to do it. But uh... well, the mum's a recovering heroin addict. Yeah. Give her, give her a few years. She'll be able. She'll be. She's only 26. Yeah. She'll be able to take the kids back and look yeah. after them yeah. herself. Um, it is worth saying because, uh, uh, or stressing anyway, that Edinburgh Council, which is the council involved here, say that the grandparents were fully involved or at all stages, that they, you know, and all of this. Um, and well, as I said, there's plenty. The grandparents are saying they were threatened that if they opposed it. Well, they're saying they, 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 they what they're actually saying is they said they felt like they were being threatened. Well, how you feel and what actually is happening mm. can be two different things. So, I don't know. The council know. could put it right and let, and let the grand help make it easier for the grandparents to, to bring up the, the, yeah. this child. Okay. Make it easy for them, give them some help. Okay. Okay, that's that. What else you got, Terry? Uh, right, well, the old uh, credit crunch, it's going to go on until 2029. Don't you love to hear a story? <laughs> like that? Yeah. No. You know, thanks. <laughs> It'll take 20 years to pay off slump debt. And, uh, and the IMF saying things are a lot, lot worse than uh, everybody assumed just three or four months ago. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just looking forward to watching Deal or No Deal with, uh, <laughs> you know, with Noel Edmonds when the banker says, uh, well, actually, I can't afford to offer you anything. <laughs> but if the audience will have a whip round and cough up, I'll see what I can do. You pay yeah, my debt. Okay. Um, then, uh, oh, these squatters on Park Lane. Oh, yeah. What a great place to squat. Uh, they actually turned round to uh, a photographer from the, from the Sun and said, Get a proper job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they've been evicted then, have they? Yeah. yeah. Imagine, yeah, what, what, what were the some... Oh, yeah, I suppose it's not exactly showbiz, is it? <laughs> you know, some photographers and squatters. But, yeah, get a proper job. Uh, well, I bet that's what, what his mum and dad says all the time. There's an interview with, with a young lady who was uh, squatting in Park Lane uh, in one of the other papers today. Her dad's a big-shot American lawyer. She's uh, over here and has been squatting all the time she's been in this country because she just says it's nuts to pay rent if this property's empty. So. You, you know what upset me about that one? The house was worth, like, 23 million quid. Yeah. And they trashed it. You know, the, the squatters moved in. They didn't just think, this is a great place to be. Yeah. They completely trashed yeah. it. Well, that is what I say. Not all squatters do. I mean, some do wonderful work on places and eventually take them over as well, uh, legally. Well, they look like students, so they probably didn't trash it. They just... Just live normally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry if you're a student. It's all right, mate. They won't have woken up for another half <laughs> year. Yeah. <laughs> you say what you like about them. <laughs> Lazy scroungers. Sorry, guys. Uh, hey, Karen, oh. anything else? Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, there's students in the audience. <laughs> oh! Ooh, scared. <laughs> Anything else, Terry? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have had that extra drink last night. Uh, what about that one? <laughs> <laughs> it's fatal, that train journey down, isn't it? Absolutely fatal. All right, then, Carol, what have you got? The, uh, the Daily Telegraph. Now, this is interesting. The BBC are going to use some of this money that they're saving on the star salaries. They, they reckon that every home should have internet broadband by... 2012. Do we think that's absolutely necessary? I have to say, if you think about rural areas, right, and they're trying yes. to say we want to get people out of cities, they're too congested, too crowded, get people to work at home. One of the great ways of enabling people to work at home in rural communities is to give them high-speed broadband. <laughs> Now, do you they're, need they're, they're, they're the areas. Well, if you've ever tried to do it, if you've ever tried yeah. to download or do any business moving images around without high speed yeah. broadband, you can you soon realise how we're, slow we're and difficult it is. More than we are on the TV these days. Well, well, we are, it well, is a great disadvantage. I mean, if you take an area like Salford, you know, up, you know, next to Manchester, where yes. they're building Media City, the BBC, yes. and they're saying that they're going to create lots of jobs for the locals up there. Yeah. And I believe they will in the canteen and on the security <laughs> desk. Up there, forty percent haven't got any internet. 
or computers yeah, at home. Should the BBC be using um, licensed payers' money to, to fund that? I'm not sure that, you know, yes, everyone should have, should have uh, internet to work, but I'm not sure the BBC should be using licensed payers' money to do you think they'd rather it? spend it on Jonathan Ross's salary? I think they should make some better <laughs> programs. I mean, oh, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I mean, if, if the programs, and more and more programs are going to be available online, and that enables people to see TV at, at their choice, yeah. then it seems a tragedy that 40% that of Salford, for example, were able to get it. Yeah, so, just uh, fewer it, repeats, more original programs. I mean, the idea that Jonathan Ross's salary, a section of it, is being removed to enable uh, those perhaps on lower incomes or in yeah. out-of-the-way places to get... You know, I that. mean, his salary should be removed anyway. It's, it's, it, I think that's part of the reason he got hammered the way he did. You know, but you say that, you say, but, you know, right, he's then. at the it's kind of top of his game, top of the tree. You go to the United States, newsreaders are earning ten times what he earns. And yeah, they read an auto cue. I mean, know, there's, no, there's no sort of wit or, or. No other chat show host got that kind of money. I mean, that was. That in this was country. Huge. Yeah, in this country. In this country. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, that was huge money, even for here. Parky never got anything like that. He's done all no, right. No, but but he didn't I, get I mean, that. It's, it's the public service aspect. Because you think about footballers. I mean, there's, there's most Premier League footballers are dwarf Jonathan Ross's. I mean, dwarf it. Well, yeah. Uh, and yes. uh, nobody complains. Well, actually, some people do complain. But about I think that. the point is it was the BBC and licensed peers' money yeah. being used to pay it. Yeah. Anyway. I have no idea why you give me this one. I mean, I left school at 15, so. <laughs> Here we go. This is for you university people, you young people, <laughs> who we've managed to prize out of bed to get here. But it said, scrap firsts and two ones say university chiefs. Do you know what that means? Yeah. Yeah, look, of course. There, look, oh, yeah, okay. okay. Well, we go. You, you have no idea. And are you at university? No. no. Oh, well, there, there you go. There, there. <laughs> <laughs> Me, so they, they, you get you get your honours degrees, but Brian. Yeah, the you... traditional method. All right, then. Yeah, okay. you know, you come on, you know. I'm just trying to read this. The cat sat on the mat. Um, <laughs> the traditional method of grading university degrees face uh, is being scrapped after vice chancellor admitted yesterday that highly academic courses were not the same as practical qualifications. In other words, get out of there and get a job. So what are they doing yeah. instead of that? Then they're saying oh, they're I not going to grade know. them at all. Uh, I, I, well, they're saying that it's wrong and they're gonna, they, have, they need to change it. Uh, but they're always going to say that, aren't But they? they're going to leave the Tutus, or the Desmonds, as yes. we used to call them. Uh, apparent. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, the, so the Desmonds, the Tutus. Got a Desmond, yeah. 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 You know what I mean? <laughs> but when you were a kid, you don't appreciate school like being spanked by a middle-aged woman, you know what I mean? No, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'll pay good money for that. Unfortunately, you know I, mean? anyway. I don't know about you, Terry, but in my case, it was a very old priest, yes, which has so never got yes. quite the same appeal. Very big Jesuit <laughs> with a leather strap. Oh, <laughs> lordy. Um, anything else? Yes, of course. There is this in the Telegraph, which is um, all about our um, climate change, it must be. We face heavy snowfalls um, as Australia struggle in 114 fa um, Who would Fahrenheit. imagine? Australia hot during their summer. What a great I know, story. I know. Yeah. Snow in Britain lady. during the winter. Who would have thought it? But the great thing is it's going to happen in the south for a change, Terry. <laughs> do you know, do you know uh, statistically, the Thames Valley is actually colder than the northeast. Shut in the up! Yeah. True that. Shut Check up! Check it. <laughs> Absolutely true. Everything he says is right now. I believe everything he says is true. Latin. Right, one more. Uh, well, there's just a heavy snowfall is forecast for the south of this country yeah. next week, putting winter on course of being the coldest in 13 I quite like years. This cold so do I. Do I like, like a bit of snow because right? it makes my yeah. garden look like better than the next door neighbours. That's oh, why I like right, it. Then. Denise to wed Joseph Idol Lee. This is in uh, the sun, um, and I think this is just a lovely story. So do I. Look at it, you know. <laughs> what the kissing. Is I wonder what he's doing underneath the water. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know but they're happy. They're in love, and I hope that they're as happy as uh, as me uh, when I'm married. That's oh. all I'd like to say. I married Miss Wright, uh, but recently I found out that her first name is Always. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little joke you could use at some point, uh, Mr. Wright. It's been my dad's favourite says, Can you get the door, Matt? And do you fancy a beer, Matt? And those two, <laughs> honestly, I'll take with me to my grave. <laughs>